Good morning, everyone, and praise God. We thank God for another opportunity to listen to his word. This is the 24th episode during this Lent season. My name is Esther Wanjiro, and our scripture reading comes from John chapter 5, beginning from verse 1. Let us pray. Redeemer Master, we thank you and we worship you this morning. We thank you for your word. We pray that this morning you may use it to guide us, direct us, and my Lord and my Father to show us where we have gone wrong. We give you glory, we give you honor. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. I start by asking each one of you a question. And the question is, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well this morning? I want you to remember last Sunday when you went to church. When you looked at those people who are in church with you, those sitting next to you, in front of you, behind you, what did you see? Did you notice people who are well-dressed, who are energized, enthusiastic, a remarkable congregation? Is that what you saw? Or were you able to look deeper into souls that could have been wounded, souls that could have been in turmoil, marriages that were on the verge of breaking, people who are jobless, maybe some who are even terminally ill, a mother who has a truant youth, a youth who is jobless. Were you able to go beyond what you saw on the physical and discern what could have been happening in the lives of those people? This morning, fortunately, the Bible reassures us in Matthew 11:28 28, that come to me, all who are weary and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. And that takes us to our scripture reading this morning from John 5, starting from verse 1. This is the healing of the paralytic man. This man had spent 35 years at the pool of Bethsaida. At that pool, there were very many people who were lame, who were blind, people who had different challenges. And as they waited, they waited for the moment that the water would be stirred. And the moment it was stirred, you had to get into that pool. And the person who got into that pool first is a person who received the healing. This person had stayed here for 38 years and he had not been lucky. So this morning, we look at this man and learn a few lessons because Jesus did come and Jesus did give him relief by healing him. Lesson one, and we get that from verse six, is we decide what we want in life. Verse 6 of chapter 5 says, When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Imagine this man, Jesus had learned that this man had been unwell for 38 years. And then he still asked him, Do you want to get well? Why do you think that Jesus asked him that question? There are two maybe possibilities. And Jesus is asking us the same question in our situations today. And the first possibility is that after we have stayed in a place for too long, we resign to fate. We decide, I have been that way for this long. I can as well continue that way. I have prayed for this situation. I have tried to cry to God. I have fasted. I have given sacrifices because of it. It has not gone. Therefore, it is okay. If I have lived for 20 years, I can live for another 30 years in the same situation. We are living in a sin. Maybe we have been trying with some addiction. We have been striving to get out of an addiction. 
And this addiction, we try, we pray about it, we make resolutions about it, but then comes a time and we are down again. And it gets to a time when we resign and we decide it, we can live with it. The guilt goes and it becomes the order of the day. Maybe there could be another reason. There are those who have stayed in a situation until they don't mind it anymore. You don't mind being in that need. You do not mind being sick. Maybe because being sick comes with some favors. Maybe when you are unwell and you can't move around, when you are jobless, then some responsibilities go to other people. Maybe in that situation, you get sympathy. You are able to manipulate others because of your need, because of the situation you are in. And that reminds me of a, of a story that I once read that was called A Prison Monger, where this person who had led a very difficult life, there were very many uh, siblings staying in one room. At one point, when you go to prison, prison was a better place. The, the rooms were uh, larger than where he had come from. There was an assured meal, and therefore he decided I'd rather stay in prison. So even when he, the time came for him to go, he made sure that he committed another crime so that he could go back to, the, to, he could go back to prison. Are we in the same situation? And that is why Jesus was keen to ask, do you want to get well? You have to put it in you and decide that you want to get well. If not, then there is very little that anybody can do. That is a big question. Number two, we must stop making excuses. We must stop complaining. There are a few lessons that I have learned in life. I will not complain even when I believe that I am justified to complain. Because the moment you're on the complaining counter, you block everything else. So when we do not complain, then we open other avenues for our situation to be resolved. This is what the paralytic man did. When Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? That is verse 7. Imagine this is what he said. He did not even say yes. He said, sir, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. When you are used to giving excuses, you will not even notice when the situation, when the solution comes your way. He never saw Jesus as the solution. He only saw the excuses and the helplessness that he was in. So when asked, he was quick to show his helplessness. That should not be the case. Notice also where his faith was. His point of faith, his faith was connected to only getting into the pool to get healed. How much we can limit God because our faith is limited. He is so limited that when help came, he could not see it. When help came, he could, not, he could only see the issues that were ahead of him. So your faith can be a blessing, but it can also be a hindrance. So you have to open up your mind and open up your faith so that you can be able to perceive what the Spirit is speaking to you about. So this morning, where is your faith? This morning, is your faith only in getting into the pool so that you can get healed? This morning, will you open up your eyes and stop limiting God into helping you get a solution to your situation? Number three, let's get obedient. Even when the command, even when the instructions that Jesus gives look a bit unreasonable. This is a man that has been on his uh, down for 38 years. Verse 7, Jesus tells him, Arise, take your bed, and walk. Many would have asked him, What's wrong with you, man? Remember, he had not recognized Jesus. He would have asked this man, Yani, you think I can just stand? You think I have been this way because I do not want to walk? But fortunately, the man decided to obey. Many a times when we have been in difficult situations and when our faith connects with God and our time for a breakthrough comes, there will be instructions that will be given. Are you willing to be obedient enough 
even when they, they seemingly seem impossible, even when those commands look like they cannot work. Are you willing to trust God in this situation? Don't question God, simply obey. The man chose to obey and he got his breakthrough. Once we obey, God makes it possible for us. As I conclude, Jesus in this situation shows his compassion. Even if the man did not know him, the man did not recognize him, his compassion is unquestionable. He moves, he's moved by the story of this man and he heals him. Number two, flee from the devil. Flee from the enemy. When Jesus finds the man in the temple, he tells him, stop sinning. Stop sinning or it will get worse. So you ask yourself, what could be worse than 38 years of being lame? And the point is, what is worse is eternal separation from God. So this morning, let's stop sinning. Let's stop what is worse than being lame for 38 years. And that is when we have no connection with God eternally. We lose it all. Let us pray. Redeemer Master, we thank you once again. May your word be deeply planted in our hearts and may we respond to your word. We commit this day unto you that we may go ahead of us. Help us to obey your word and obey your commands. Through Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Thank you.